decided to bring on Alia Narani and uh, Zaha Kamali to the show as my incredible co-host today to talk about their stories. Stories that are being shoved under the carpet, stories that are devastating, but stories that bring hope. And a little bit about myself. I am a career strategist and a life coach. I have been delivering cognitive behavior therapy since 2014, the national leader for Living Life to the Full program with the Ismaili community from 2016 until the end of 2019. And in 2020, I stepped into the leadership role as an advisor to the Mental Health Living Life to the Full portfolio. It is my utmost pleasure to introduce to you, firstly, Zoha Kamali, sorry, uh, I'll start with Alia, my apologies, is that, you know, I connected with Alia and Alia has introduced me to Zoha um, and Zoha actually come on one of my shows as a participant watching and, uh, you know, I hope Robert is joining us too. So now Alia, Alia is a passionate advocate for mental health and runs a support circle for the Ismaili Muslim youth here in Calgary. And it is called Talk Over Tacos. Her battle with anxiety, depression, and failed suicide attempt in 2017 has altered the, uh, the trajectory of her life for better and consistently strives to be the best version of herself. She hopes to spread awareness on the topic that rarely gets discussed and is an authentic, raw, and unapologetic way and hopes that her vulnerability will invite others to do the same. Thank you so much for joining us, Alia. You are muted right now. We need to unmute you. We need to hear you. <laughs> I feel like you're just gonna have to unmute me again if I start chattering too much about this topic, but that was so wonderful. So thanks so much for having us on. Yes, that's fantastic. Now I will introduce wonderful Zoha. Zoha, it's fantastic to actually see you um, on camera. I feel like, you know, we are just sitting in a living room and chatting and that's what this is about, is that's what it is about, is that having those chai conversations, right? So uh, what I wanted to share about Zoha is that, you know, she has been wonderful in coming and saying, yes, she wanted to also share her story. Now, Zoha is also a suicide survivor and an advocate for mental and emotional well-being. Uh, you were doing some fantastic things that I learned about you on LinkedIn, actually. So I will let you share that as well. And so what she's going to be doing is she's going to be sharing her own experience and she hopes others would not make the same mistakes as she did. Hello, Zoha, you muted as well. Let's unmute you and bring you on. Thank you. Thank you. Hello from New York. <laughs> so, lovely to be on here and uh, really thankful to Alia for the introduction and, uh, you know, sharing our journey. Thank you so much for being very, um, you know, it is. it takes a lot for people to come and say that, yes, that I'm going to talk about this. And, you know, it's bizarre. Like, how, how, how did you come across and say, yes, you will sign up for this? Because I'll just share one more thing over here. I've known Alia for such a long time. And whenever I saw her before, she would say, you know, I saw you on LinkedIn. That was good. <laughs> Now, I have over 12,000 connections. It's not a boast thing. Bro knows so many people. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. And I'm like, I don't know who she is, but I didn't tell anybody. And Alia didn't comment on my post. So she's the silent person that sees that comes up to me. That was good. I'm like, thank you, I think. And so I have been trying to connect with her. Uh, first of all, for living life to the full, but she's been like, oh, this weird old guy. He's like, uncle, and she does call me uncle. 
So the talk about tacos, I'll let you talk about that in just a brief moment. But a couple of weeks ago, I joined, and it was around the uncles and aunties and the multi-generational, what goes on, and people talk about these things and how it impacts the younger generation. When I came on, what I said, I am the uncle here because I'm much older than many of you in that group. But the thing about that is that we think that, you know, at my age, by the way, I'm 55, and I can outdance. That needs to be shared. Thank you very much. So, oh, what's going on over there? There was some echo there. Sorry about that. Um, and with what I'm saying with that is that it doesn't stop at my age of 55 of my uncles and aunties doing these things. And so here I am as in this age, and I would love you to share the idea behind Talk Over Tacos, please, Alia. Yeah, for sure. So um, of course, with that experience in 2017 and just feeling, you know, with our title of our event today, just feeling like you're the only one who goes through something like this. And it's um, and it was funny. I know we were talking before on the Uncle, and we were saying, you know, like I was highly connected in the community. Everybody knew me, and I'm like, this cannot, this can, this cannot happen to me. Out of all people, like I honestly thought mental health and all this stuff was bogus. Like you know, I had anxiety and all these things, but until it got very, very real for me, and I'm like, I'm someone who's always surrounded by people, and I felt alone. So I'm like, what about the people that? maybe aren't being watched over by the people in their community or the people in their school, their friends, whatever it is. So I'm like, there has to be someone else who's feeling like this. And you'll constantly hear time and time again on a community, there needs to be a spot where we can do this in Jamaat Khan or whatever it is, and nobody was doing it. So it's like, well, how hard could it be, right? So that's why I wanted at least a safe space to talk about some of these things for anyone who wanted to come to any of these events. So that's where it kind of came from that I didn't want what was happening to me happening with other people. I know with Zoha as well, like that was the last line or an introduction to make the same mistake she did. So um, yeah, that's where it kind of came from though, so. You know, I'd just like to let the viewers know, Jamaat Khana means prayer house. Right. All three of us actually belong to the same faith. Uh, these shows are not about faith based because depression, anxiety, mental illness, does not say, well, you need to belong to this faith, you need to belong to this age group, you need to belong to this sexual orientation, you need to be, you know, male, female, a child, it can happen to anybody, whether it's the rich or the poor. And, you know, last year, actually, it was shocking that a famous designer mm -hmm. took, yeah. a, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. this TV personality, a host about a cooking show and travel and all that you like and so with COVID happening one of the things that i'm finding is that we are seeing lots of people are getting impacted mm -hmm. and what i'm talking about that we are breaking the stigma because a lot of people are facing this but the thing is is that are we still getting comfortable in talking about this. So I applaud you both for coming on today. Now, I'd just like to digress for just a couple moments and share about, is it true that um, when, when you, in 2017, were your parents not leaders in the Jabal Khanna? I mean, you know, there was, and you talk about being a leader in the community for the youth, and people looking up to you. And here, not only are you a leader, but also your parents are high up in the Jamaat Khanna, in the um, house of worship. What was all of that about? How did you deal with not only people talking about it, but perhaps your parents or, you know, the community in general, please, Alia? Mm -hmm. So I think... I think when that was all going on, first of all, I honestly thought I was getting punked because I was inside, again, like you said, I was in a leadership position. My parents were top dogs and it's like, well, you had to stay quiet about these things because of course my parents are super supportive. They knew exactly what was going on, but it's like, 
I couldn't be telling Randos and Kanye like, hey, I'm sick right now. This is I haven't been Kanye because X, Y, and Z reasons. Because while you're trying to recover, having all this bombard at you from everyone you know in this place of worship, it was it was kind of like I have this and I'm literally trapped. And I think, you know, going back to you can be in a sea full of people and still feeling alone. I think that's probably the hardest thing where it's um and I had this realization too when I was in the psych ward I'm like I know everybody and everybody knows me and my parents are these people and I'm this person I can still feel like this and I think that's when the trajectory of the community is this or other people like are like this I think it's it, I went through a lot of really hard soul searching when it's really wasn't about other people quote unquote at all but um definitely when I was going I actually found it really funny because I'm like like, I honestly thought I was an it girl and my everyone, this could not have happened. So when that all did, I'm like, life is definitely not what you think it's gonna be, you know? So, um, but no, I'm just rambling there a little bit, but I think it was definitely hard to just be around so many people and just having to put on a fake smile. Like when someone asks you, how are you doing? Right away, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm good, how are you? Cause who would you be if you said, no, I'm, I feel like shit and I wanna talk about this and this is going on, who would you be, right? You'd be cuckoo. So, yeah, I think it was definitely really difficult um, that it was all happening at the same time, so, yeah. That was very brave. And the thing about this is that, you know, even if we say we're not okay, so right now, yes, I'm going through a funk as well. And when people say that I'm not feeling good, like I'm not okay, I, or actually what people say is I'm okay. And are you okay, really? Is that when people even tell you, I'm okay, and you sense there's something happening, are we equipped to be able to help them? Do we even know what to do? And when it's so great that your parents were very supportive. And here I'm thinking that, you know, I'll be very authentic and honest over here, is that when I deliver these Living Life to the Full sessions, it's such a blessing the cognitive behavior therapy, when I'm delivering these, I'm practicing these steps. Because, you know, if you don't use, you can lose your muscle. If you don't work out, you get muscle atrophy. I can't even say the word right now. And so if I don't use my tools for mental health, I could step, like, it can impact me. And here... You had the tools in the way of faith and all of that, but with the faith and the culture of, and this is another thing, I, I'll jump around, but there's a reason for that, is with the youth, and I see you as the youth, very open, very accepting of talking about mental illness, mental health, and yet it being a struggle because of the perception, the stigma of people in the community saying, oh my gosh, like seriously, what's going on over here? What is wrong with her parents? They are leaderships and can they not? And when I deliver these sessions or when I'm marketing this in the mosque, I get told, who are you? You know, the thing about this is that pick up your tasmi, means your rosary, have faith in God. And who are you to be talking about this when God is great? And so the, all these stories and how it can impact us, all of that, what can you share about that, Alia? I would even want to, I would even love to even throw this off to Zoha. I feel like we've even talked a little bit about mm -hmm. this. And like, I'd love to hear from you, Zoha. Like if that were to be a thing and people are telling you, you know, the thugs we think, first of all, it's like, my, my parents told me that as well. And I'm like, there's no more beads left on this thing that's going to fix this. So I got to do something else. So, so I'd love to hear from you. Like if, when you hear some of these things, like what kind of comes to mind when it's like, do your tazbi, say your dua, like it can go away from those things. So honestly, to me, I think, um, I mean, my experience has been very different in terms of, I did not come out. I will share this up until last year. Um, and my incident was back in um, was it 2012, and um, at that time, um, India actually had a law. Or if you tried to 
attempt suicide and you survived, you were put in jail. So it was, I had no idea at that time. I was, oh my God, I don't even want to get into the whole legal aspect of it, but that's, uh, you know, so for me, now it was like, it was, I mean, it was really like, like it took a lot of courage. And the reason I also did this was because I realized that in our culture, in our community, mental health, anxiety, depression, you know, being vulnerable to that point is just looked down upon, you know, like if you're depressed, uh, instead of actually seeing a counselor or a therapist, people that said, talk to friends, you know, um, when in honesty, you honestly, when someone's going through anxiety or depression, I think, you know, one really does need a professional to talk to. And of course, friends and training and everything, you know, uh, is good and wonderful, but it also is like a whole chemical imbalance. And we really need to start looking at it from that perspective as well. You know, so what, how does, the whole chemical imbalance, how, what is it that we're eating, you know? How does it impact us? And I think there's so many dynamics to it that we really need to, um, that we need to think about, you know? It's, it's the food aspect, it's what's happening in our life and how is that truly impacting us? And if it is, then how can we get the required help? You know, and of course, prayers is there. And of course, we have to pray and we have to have full faith. But sometimes we just feel like things are going out of control, you know, and we're not able to, you know, handle it. So before, you know, we get to that position, how do we get that help? And, um, you know, to me, I feel like it's so important for us to talk about, you know, seeking help, getting help, because that is looked down upon not in america but of course in other parts of the world thank you so much for sharing that zoha and that took a lot of courage to actually say what you were going through and really be authentic and honest about it and i applaud you for that because you know so many times we we see somebody who has you know something like for example somebody has fallen down and has got a cast on their leg and we are right away empathetic. We cannot see what other people are going through. And there's this beautiful, beautiful Instagram post that I saw. And it's, you look at it, it's, it's dark and it's, it's a dog, it's a rabbit and a cat. And what that, is, what that post says, unless you zoom in on the picture, you cannot tell what is going on in people's lives. Yeah. And here, that picture, when you zoom in on the dog, it is of a family. It's of a male, a female, and a baby. And you zoom in on the cat or the rabbit, and it's a mother with the child. And you zoom in on the you know, bunny, uh, you know, it could be the other way around, but you get the picture. It's about a, a couple. So these are happy pictures that we have, you know, zoomed up. But with COVID that's happening, right. with losing their jobs, with families getting, you know, with, 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 with people not being able to connect, as it is when people have anxiety and depression, the isolation piece, right. is not, if it, it's going to be a tsunami is what I talk about. And we are so much into the filters of Instagram and putting those in life. And when we're putting those filters on because we are afraid to show up, here I am a mental health advocate. Here I deliver these and yet I'm saying, I need help. Right. So, you know, where is that shift? Is right. that, you know, you swallow your pride and you're thinking, oh my gosh, if I am going to say I need help, then when I'm, will I be not be able to deliver what I love because two weeks ago I had these things, things that you could do right away to be happy. This month is about mental health. Right. And 
of the session, you actually came on as, you know, viewers or how, because Alia had invited you. And guess who was on that show? Robert was saying, hmm. And he was like, tap and talk, tap and talk. And he said, can this work? So not only about creating that space in the work setting and talking about, hey, you know, not only are we going to talk about mental health, but what are we going to talk about is that, you know, let's do something because it's a community right. with all of this, right? And what did we have over there? We had energy, what Robert was doing. We had music. That is what helps. We had dance. And, oh, my gosh. Like, what this beautiful Zaina did... And she said, I can't dance on her uncle. She calls me on her uncle. I call her my daughter, by the way. And the thing about that is like, I've got, she's, she's got an injury. I'm like, I know. But I'm talking about diversity and inclusion. Can you do something that is a chair? And she's like, I do that. I'm like, yes. But the other piece to it is that service. And that's where I'm going around about in a circle. Is that by doing acts of service, and Alia, I don't know about you, uh, Zoha, but I know, Alia, you're so big in the community by doing all of these things for youth and all of that. And what if people say, oh, my gosh, he's got mental illness. We can't let him or her or this person, him, her, she, he, you know, all, I'm being inclusive over here, the other gender. What if they can't do these acts of service that bring them that joy and bring them that, you know, ability to come and share that, yes, I am able to, you know, be functioning as a person. And uh, so what are your thoughts about that? Please, please do share. I I'll quickly just say something on that. And I think, you know, part of it is like, I hear like, oh, you're such a leader. You're doing all these great things for these youth. And that also, to me, I feel like I have an identity crisis when people tell me that. I'm like, no, because a lot of the time, um, you know, I, I have great support. I had great support. I have great support. But sometimes a lot of it is just, man, I need to just get on there and talk to other people who are going through it too. Because more than ever, it's like, you know, I've gone through this. I've probably never been more anxious than I am right now you know in general like just with not just covid but just i don't want to say life is hard guys but it's uh it definitely throws things at you and you think that you know you've gone through this the first time that it's never going to happen to you again so it's like if people really genuinely like when someone asks you how are you doing all it takes is that little bit just to reciprocate back and just also ask them how they are doing. Cause now more than ever, like everyone can be a leader, everyone can be a mental health advocate, but I think it's that vulnerability um, piece. I don't think I even answered the question there. I'll call you. We're just talking about it. Just, I love it. It just, it just brings a lot out, you know, like we really just do need each other this time. Like it's already hard when you don't think you have anyone, but now if you're going to beat yourself up about these things too in yourself, like what are you left with? And I think from my experience, from Zoha's experience, we've been there, we've done that. And as a guy, we're not going there again. And no. if we are going to go there again, then... We're, we're going to stop each other. And I have to say, we have a really, really... I mean, Alia, we haven't shared, like, how we met. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I actually found Alia on Facebook. And to be honest... The, you know, the, the talk show, like where the title came from was when I was talking to Alia and I was like, Alia, I swear, I think I found a sister and, you know, like a partner in crime, a sister in crime. I was like, I cannot, I was, I cried that day. I was like, what? There's another girl in my community who was gone through the same thing and I'm not alone and I'm not the only one. It was unreal. I was like, I just like, and I was like, oops, hi, I have like, you know, <laughs> um, and I was just like, I reached out to her and I said, you know, um, I would love to talk to you. I just, you know, I just want to speak with you. And then we connected, you know, I'm in New York, she's in Canada, like it was so beautiful. And then we were like, oh my God, we got to do something. We have to like, 
talk about this and share this. And it was really an amazing moment for me. Like when I came across Kalia's video and it was just, I was like, wow, this really, it really empowered me to know that there's someone like Alia out there from the community, from, you know, same culture community, just having gone through that. So I'm really glad and thankful, Alia, for your video. And I'm so thankful I came across it. And I think it being just that so like that makes me so emotional just hearing that. I think one thing I found wild, I'm like, you're in a whole other country and you literally think there's no one in your community there at home that you thought you could talk to. You know, isn't that the craziest thing? Like everyone, you know, we're saying mental health is a thing and people are talking about it, but it took a video on the other side of not complete other side of the world to be like, you know, there's someone else who's going through this. And I think when we think we, what can we do? Like, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. You don't need to be any of that. I know there's people in my circle that are watching right now that literally all they had to do was just be there constantly and just to check up on me because you know, we think we have to take the world on our shoulders, but that's just so powerful for that, Zoha. And I'm, I'm glad I helped you. I hope whoever's watching this, I hope, I hope they can talk to other people. That's all that this is about. Yeah. You know? But also, uh, you know, Alia, oh, yeah, I think, like, to be fair, like, how many times do we talk about our mental health? We just say, hi, how are you? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. just a courteous way of things. But, but, you know, even for us when we are going through any kind of anxiety or depression like how many times do we really talk to our even our friends you know about it like we're everything we just kind of try to figure out inside and to be fair like during covid when this whole thing hit for one month i thought i was okay and then the next i don't know after three weeks um it was just like i literally was put put a call out for the council. I said, you know what? I know I'm all about mental health and well being. And I started, you know, hosting meditation sessions and bringing people together and doing community building. Cause I said, like, if I can help people build that network, you know, they'll have someone to reach out to. So I started doing that last year. It was fantastic. And, um, but I feel like we, when we are going through something, we shut down, you know, and uh, it takes a lot of courage to come out and say, okay, this is what we are going through. And I found just speaking to a counselor to be really helpful, really. I think talking to my friends about my issues, I just, I, I feel like, you know, it's great to talk to them and share it with them. But personally, I love talking to someone professional who can be like, okay, this is how you're feeling and break the emotions down, you know, like whatever overthinking. And I think to be fair, we, you know, there are people, we have friends and I have tons of friends, but I just, for me personally, I don't like to share all of this, you know? So, but when I came across you in your video, it's like, okay i can actually talk to this girl and then i remember how you said i've been sitting in my pajamas like oh my god <laughs> you know <laughs> i was like yay we can have like a real conversation you know i can just say hey this is how i'm feeling but if i come across something fun to send it to you and be like hey this cheers hope this cheers you up you know yeah yeah and that's all that it takes i also want to say so that's really I think that's really powerful that you found something that works for you. I think sometimes it's, I think two things. The one thing is that, okay, that it's very clear cut. A, B will always equal C. And it's like, okay, well, I'm telling you, go talk to your friends. And you're saying, go talk to a shrink for someone else. I mean, go do this, go do that. Exactly. Like, no cookie exactly. cutter answer to this stuff. Yeah. And like you said, Elnor and Uncle, like it, it's a muscle. If you do not work at this every day, I'll be very honest. I I don't know why I'm feeling. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like COVID, it's it's horrible. It's happening, and I there's parts that I really liked and just being with myself. But there's some days I'm like, oh my. I will call maybe seven people in a row, and I'm like, it's not working. Right. But you just gotta keep like at it, right? To find something that like works. And I think the other thing too is I know I feel like oh you're like this as well. That I'm like if there's a problem, let me just go solve it. Let me create a list. Let me find out what's happening in my brain and. And that's like, can we just chill the hell out for a second that we do not have to solve anxiety and depression in a day? And if there's going to be a day you're going to sit in your pajamas, 
And that's fucking okay. It's okay. It has to be okay. Yeah. There's, you don't have any other choice. Yeah. yeah. There's no cookie cutter approach. And what worked for Zoha, what worked for you, Alia, may not work for another person. And uh, yeah, picking up that phone is what you know was shared. So Benny, I love her to be the pieces, Benita. Um, she said she would like the link to your video. So please do post it in the comments of the Facebook Live. The other thing I'm going to share with you is that, you know, and I'm coming to the next question about vulnerability, and I've shared about vulnerability a little bit over here. But back in um, when I moved to Canada was another time. So backtrack. I've been through lots of personal like traumas, tragic events, starting at age six with attachment injury, age eight, repeated trauma that have, you know, that have been what they have. And I used to always look at the world is like, you know, why me? And now what I'm doing is like, okay, what is that lesson? But whenever, whenever, the, and I don't want to use the word crisis. Chinese have this beautiful thing is that the word crisis is telling to opportunity plus the challenge. And when we look at the challenge, what are we learning from this? How are we growing? And when you are in that depth, it is very hard to think outside of that and to be very mindful and say, hey, today I can't, and being kind to yourself. Because how many times are we our own worst critics? Oh, like, yeah. Right. Somebody else say, oh, you know what? Let me get for you a chai. Let me because the chai is that warm thing that fills your heart from inside out, right? Let me do something for you. Bring you. I'm not going to say chicken soup, vegetarian soup because I don't eat meat. I'm kidding. You know what I mean, right? You take for your. You take care of your friend. You do things to help and build that community. But do you do that for yourself? And it is very hard when you are in the midst of this, you know, uh, tsunami or the whirlpool of all of that is by taking just time to breathe. And, you know, there is places, time for meditation, being out in nature, touching that, listening to music and being, and being a listening ear. But how many times do people in the community say, well, do this, do this, do this, and they're trying to fix, but we need that listening. And so when I came to Canada, I was emotionally and even physically abused, right? And <laughs> chicken soup for all. It's fish soup for all new soul. Yes, let's go get that book. Um, and what I went through is that I became so severely depressed that I was suicidal as well. And I went through so much that I used to go through panic attacks. And I developed sleep apnea. I was in college, Mount Royal College, and I failed all my classes because what happens with sleep apnea is you do not get REM sleep. And REM is the rapid eye movement, and that can help you. Like, there's so many things that happen from that. I remember sitting in accounting. Ugh, I had to take it for HR. Sorry, all your accountants love you to bits because you can handle all of that. But I used to take Joe of Cola. Now, you ladies are too, too young for that. It is twice the caffeine, twice the sugar, a mild bar. And do you remember those, pen, do you know those pencils that you can take the pencil and you can press that, the nip comes out, and as soon as I feel like I'm going to go to sleep, I'm like stabbing myself while I'm sitting at the back to try and get myself awake. And I could not because two years without sleep because my body is screaming for oxygen when I'm sleeping at night, so I don't get that sleep. So memory loss, all of those things, to be in that class, and I remember sitting at the back, and I don't know how I woke up, and everybody was looking at the back because I was snoring so loud, and the instructor had stopped the class and just looking. that I carried my stuff. And I left the hall. And I did not even remember the classes I was in. And going through that was one of the lowest periods in my life. And where am I sharing this is that I did not know a way out. And I remember going to the school psychologist and all of that. 
and talking about this and, you know, talking about these panic attacks and all of that. And here I'm being very vulnerable. And I want to ask you both is that, yes, you've been very vulnerable throughout these. And I'm being mindful of the time. Are you guys okay to stay a little longer? Um, and those watching, if you can just drop down in the comments, if you're okay to stay longer. Um, stabbing impression, that is so true. And thank you so much for the yellow heart there, Benny. Um, is that, you know, both of you have been very authentic. And can you tell us about a time when you were so vulnerable and you came across, what were some of the things that were going on that made you say, you know, I will still show up because showing up is such a hard thing. And this morning on a Facebook Live, I talk about my resilience as a kid going through attachment injury, going through repeated, repeated trauma at age eight. And I did not know what resilience was and to be able to come and deliver these mental health talks and come across and say, look, I'm not perfect, because you know what? We're looking at these people who are leaders as being perfect when I'm being imperfectly perfect. And so I would like you to please share about your experiences. Either one of you can start, please. Zola, go ahead. Okay. Um. I think uh, I think okay. Well, I mean, when I moved to America, I've been by myself, uh, and there have been a lot of moments, you know, where I'm like, "What am I doing here by myself?" I've been doubting this whole journey, um, especially with the job market and everything. It's been exceedingly hard. And um, and I feel like um, I just feel like if I, you know, I feel like I've been through something and I started this early on, you know, and I feel like I have to find it in me to continue finding a way to address like every time something throws me off and the last two and a half years have been beautiful because i have learned so much about myself being alone how building resilience you know just like finding those as soon as i feel like i'm spiraling or something's happening i literally i have like a plan like what to cut out like food like i literally look at food first and then I'm like, okay, how can I, who can I talk to immediately? Like, you know, what, and um, to me, um, I find that I have to just, I have to keep telling myself I'm here for a reason, you know, because if, if I had not survived, I would not be here. So that is something that sort of constantly brings me back up front to the table. It says, you know, I'm here for a reason. I'm here, um, you know, if I give up right now, then what about those who come after me, you know? So that's what it's about for me, to continue to go through it and just say, okay, this is how, what I went through, this is what's helping me, whether it's meditation, it's Kabbalah, it's praying, it's whatever spirituality or and religious or just talking to someone, therapy, just just putting out those vulnerabilities out there. And I'm not perfect. And I hate this whole talk about perfection because I think that's what gets up, gets us into trouble. But that's, I hope I answered the question. That's Thank you so much for that. And you know what? That's so helpful. Um, Inaya, I hope uh, she doesn't mind me sharing this. She posted up on Instagram is about dance. And she says how she can get lost in dance. And sometimes, you know, it, and what I responded to that comment is that, you know, what we see as reality right now, but when we step into the edges of reality, and there's a term for that, which is escaping my mind, adjacent realities. And for me, going into the dance, it fills my soul 
I don't, Alia, do you remember me dancing in, you know, all of these events in Kane? And sometimes when I'm in that zone, I'm in the moment, I can get so lost because there is that pureness. And I feel so close to the creator. And when I say this, people say, uh, you feel close to the creator? Like, you know, it's a trance for me. But that is what works for me. And I love to get lost in that because sometimes... Alia, you said that, that, you know, life is so hard. Yes, it is. We are not sugarcoating this. And so many people sugarcoat and put it like the rug. This is not what this is about. This is about validating your feelings and saying you are not alone. And so before I go any further, can everybody who's watching please give a virtual group hug? to these beautiful ladies who are stepping forward, is that, you know, we all need touch. And my my dear friend, mentor, guru, she, Patricia Morgan, and I was talking about like how my mom went into Generations, which is like a nursing home, and how I did not see her before COVID, is that, you know, when I reach out to her FaceTime, I do this and I get her to do that. So. I would like you both to do this, is to give yourself hugs as well and feel that hugs from the community because you know what? We all need this at this time. And I'm sorry, I'm just going, you know, outside the thing. But where I'm going with this is that COVID has been, I'm not going to say the word. Would you like to be real and say what you think I'm thinking, Alia? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, COVID is a lot of things. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just, now I'm just getting like emotional thinking about all these things and just I, no, it's no. it's it's just a lot, and you know, the only thing I would say, like, I'm not, I I actually don't know what you're thinking on the wrong call. I think there's a lot of just emotions in my head right now about what all of this is and stuff. And all I can really just say, at least for myself, it's like, you got to have hope and there has to be patience. Cause I, and sometimes I feel like that could be a little bit of mumbo jumbo even to me. And it's like, I don't have anything else if I don't go to those things. So I could be a little bit like, well, it's not going to get any better. And um, I don't have any other choice. I think then to be hopeful and to just take it honestly, not even a day at a time. I like block out my, I think it was even yesterday. I didn't make my daily like schedule thing. And maybe it was like six hours of me just spinning in my head. And it's like, you know, like Zoha, you have those things that you know what you need to do, like the safe space that, you know, whatever it is. And it's like, I got to just keep on sticking to that. So I know I didn't answer your question there, but um you did wonderful. That is that is what and that is what happens, right? Is that we can get so stuck. And what I call this is like I feel stuck in in like quicksand. Mm -hmm. I call it. Mm -hmm. I have the tools. And for us that self-love is that you know we are so hard on not giving that self-love. So guys, if you're watching, what I would like you to do, something that is really hard is do a pedicure. Go put on a charcoal face mask. And you know what? You deserve that charcoal face mask. And when you're ripping it from your skin, but there are those that don't hurt, go put those on because you know what? You're doing something gentle, but it is going to be that self-love and you go, oh my God, I can't do this. Yes, you can. And where I'm going with this is that both of you have shared what you have done. And what I'm sharing over here is that I have climbed Mount, I used to carry mountains. And now I'm hiking mountains. And when I reach the top, I'm like, hey, I've done it. I know everything. But you know what? When a challenge happens again, I'm like climbing a mountain. Like, you know? Like, that is what it is, is that we have that with us, right? And we feel like we cannot do it, but it is taking those micro steps is what I call. And what my son, when he was younger, he used to say is that when you fail, you learn. And you know what? Our leaders, our teachers are not these gurus. 
they come in all shapes and sizes and they are in books and sometimes books don't work for people you can listen to podcasts you can come in all of those things right and that is what you do is that you reach out and you build a community and that is what it is about right and so having those spaces open for our youth with talk over tacos and i used to joke around with her like you know why taco call it a rokli or uh, you know call it call it um, naan but what is all of this like you know tuesday taco come on today's <laughs> the culture my falguni bai kya yo bai she i joined kya she was on last week and she talked oh my god she had i had shivers right uh, when she was sharing please check out the youtube link of what falguni had shared and it's just brilliant so where am i going with this yes rotli right none none of this like you know lettuce and tacos right so humor is another thing that i do to help me get over things so thank you so much if there are any questions from those who are watching please do share them now i um so uh, i'd like to give you a little space over here you had shared um in that email to me that yes you do have a book if you do where can people get that can you share if people need to reach out to you i'd shared your instagram handle so please do share that right now so, so i have a uh, i write poem so i have a wordpress and um i find writing to be just amazing it just um you know this helps me when honestly when i'm going through something i just have to write a poem and then i can <laughs> i can actually start feeling um so it's in it's in my name so her karmali um at wordpress.com and i'm happy to put it um here but um there are some poems that have been shared because they're like so personal when i'm like yeah i don't think i want the world to see it but um uh you know that's that's one way of coping and also i have to say i love dancing i love 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 dancing it's one way to get me out of any funk is just put on dance we like techno house whatever that just gets me going and i'm just like people are like really you like this kind of music and i'm like yes because you're right it just connects you it just you don't need anything you just need the music and you're just like in you know in another zone so <laughs> i'm glad someone else feels that way oh my god oh my god <laughs> Okay, I I with the inflammation that's happening in my body, I know walking and all of that. So, I put on these like, you know, they they, they are the wireless headphones, right? And I put it on Mixcloud and this one time there was um what what's what's this called? Oh my god. Um shoot. Uh, anyways, and I was like, wow, this music is good. It was Arabic Indian and with a house influence and it was like and salim suleiman came on and it was a mix and we know the music of salim suleiman right they better know that i'm like giving them a heads up and props and all of that right and so it was it was just like and it, the dj was dj scoop and what the thing is is that uh, let's i i can't see this um sorry i'll i'll get back to it uh, later um but it was chai uh sorry but the thing was that the pain was screaming and what i talk about when i'm delivering these is strap the pain in the back seat so those who are parents when you've got a baby who's streaming and you need to get somewhere what do you do you still go is you strap them in the back seat and you go and so with that pain in the back seat and i you know shut my the noise to the pain and i went walking and when that song came on 
I was dance walking and the lights had, you know, they were not working and there was a police officer on, had got out of his car and he was directing traffic and I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I am dance walking. It is for my mental health and I'm going to like shake my hips because Shakira, she didn't know it until I started. All right. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh-huh. And with that, he's like, look at him, like, look away. You better be giving money because, you know, dollar dollar bills is what kind of, anyways. So, <laughs> um, we go way over time. But I'm gonna roll. And when that was going on, it was just like, I forgot all of the SH exclamation plus sign that was going on in my life because that is what music and dance does for me so whatever works for you please do that if it is writing if it is journaling and um, thank you for sharing that you have that blog Aya please I think with that is like you know we have talk over tacos as you know, a space right now, I would just even encourage anyone who's watching or has heard me, like you you don't have to be a superhero to reach out to someone. You know, like you don't, it doesn't have to be difficult. I think if anything, we try to, I try to make it as easy for myself as much as possible, you know? And I think the other thing is just to be patient with ourselves, I think. And like you said, owner, like it's just to, to be kind like this is such a it's a constant everyday thing and if we're not kind to ourselves then what do we kind of expect from the rest of the world if we're trying to um you know get that so i think you know i think just to be kind to be patient and to honestly just take it moment by moment i know the thing that works for me as i physically have to remove myself like if i'm in my head i have to go distract myself and do something else to get me out of that mindset but that's the strategy that works until it keeps on working, we're going to keep doing it. And if it doesn't, we're going to go find something else. But um, I think totally about just the patience and the kindness. And I think just be good to yourself. So I guess I'll just leave it at that, though. But you know what? If there, there are any youth in Calgary or, like, are inspired to start a taco over tacos on their own, like, it, even if it's one person, I say, like, just empower you to go do that, right? So, and I think the one last thing is that we – this whole thing of just having a blanket over, you know, what we see in social media and you might think people are okay. I think talk to your friends, talk to your friends. Cause it's probably your friends who are probably struggling the most silently and they think they're alone, but they're not the ones who are going to say it out. So talk to your friends, everybody. So, yeah. Bless your hearts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for being authentic and real. I'm just going to post this on that because uh, Zoha, you shared that over here so people can see where they can get that uh, link. Um, thank you. What works for one may not work for another and find that magic, the pill that works for you. What I mean by that, whatever works for you, whether it is dancing, whether it is writing, journaling, and talking to people. And what these young ladies have just shared is that we are not alone. And, uh, you know, I'm sorry I'm going to say this, Alia, is that it's not about um, you not being a super. You don't think you're a superhero. Yes, you are. Heroes don't wear capes. And you are that hero in my life. And for you to come on board and, you know, uh, yes, I'm that weird uncle that you find me allowed in your Facebook because until then you were like, <laughs> beg her just before the show. Can you for crying out loud? Just because I am the light and you know what i say i am the light but it flickers and you know what that's okay for the light to flicker but you can show up and be real and what these ladies have done is being showing up and being real so one last thing i would like to share with everybody that if you've been triggered by any of this please reach out to your mental health profession. Please 
do some self-care. Please shake it. Shake it like, oh my God, Taylor, 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 Taylor Swift. Shake it off. Let us dance it out. You know what, Soha? We won't tell Alia, but you know what we can do is we'll have a virtual dance party. And you know what? I know this current kind of nursing kind of something home kind of thing. <laughs> do you want to show something on your hand, Alia? I know you're very proud. It's funny. It's funny. I don't actually, I don't wear it. I don't wear, where's, where's it? Yeah, I don't put it on. I don't wear it, which is really oh, bad. Yeah. You know, watch it. <laughs> but yeah, it's not on. I probably should put it on though. <laughs> yeah. She just got engaged. Yay! 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 Come on, bring the house down. Thank right. you. Thank you for that. So please shake it off like Taylor Swift. Shake what your mama gave you because you know what? That is what's gonna help, right? Love. And I'll see you next week. It's going to be around safety and I have this wonderful, oh my God, amazing lady who is a filmmaker. She's got the short uh, award winning film and she's going to be talking raw what these ladies have been doing. And she's going to talk about how she was able to keep her mental health as well. So, but it's around safety. So I hope you guys tune in. Thank you. Love and chai. See you next week. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. And uh, I am Al Noor. See you guys later. Bye bye.